like shutting it off. Officer. Well, you're going to jail. Excuse me. That happened two years ago in Jones County, Mississippi. The man behind the camera spent the night in jail. The police confiscated his camera, and they thought they erased the video, but as you saw, they didn't. It was recovered. What startles me watching it is that I just assume that outdoors you can legally videotape a cop doing his public duty. Police officers have unusual power. They can arrest you, shoot you. I think it would be important to be allowed to have a video record. But in the last few years, in all these states, people have been threatened or detained or arrested after recording the police. Bradley Balco wrote a Reason Magazine article about it. He joins me now. So, really locked up? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> locked up, uh, threatened. Uh, now, in most of these cases, the people aren't actually prosecuted. Uh, the charges tend to get dropped uh, before these cases get to trial. Uh, and I think because uh, the people prosecuting these cases and the people who make the laws don't want the laws to actually get challenged. But, 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 but it's a night in jail. I mean, it's... Uh, what, what does the arresting cop say? What... Well, in states that have these two-party consent uh, laws, they, they rely on the old wiretapping laws, and they're claiming that police officers... We have officers a graphic of which those states are, and they do really impede reporting on government, these two-party states. Well, and then the claim is that police officers have a right to privacy while they're on the job, you know, in public, uh, you know, uh, exercising, let's face it, some pretty powerful uh, responsibilities that we give them. I, I think that claim is ridiculous. Uh, but that's usually the charge. Now, they also say you're interfering with arrest or you're refusing to obey a lawful order if they tell you to turn the camera off and you don't. But, and I think those arrests are, are wrong as well. How does it interfere with the arrest? You're just recording the arrest. Well, it only, fears, it only interferes with the arrest if the police officer is bothered by the fact that you're recording him. Uh, and it's, it's, a, uh, you know, it's, it's a ridiculous argument. But here's the thing. I mean, you may not go to jail for these charges, but they're going to take your camera, they're going to arrest you, you know, you're going to be handcuffed, you're going to be put in the back of a squad car, and nothing is going to happen to the police officers who Ill illegally arrest you. Um, Usually. What, nothing, even when they, they don't get reprimanded, suspended? Well, in the, in the Mississippi case, the video that you just showed, the police officers deleted evidence in that criminal case. They destroyed evidence. And nothing happened and, to them for and that? And nothing happened to them. No investigation, nothing. Here's one more case. In Maryland, motorcyclist Tony Graber got in trouble for taping a cop who pulled him over for speeding. Here's the clip. Get off the motorcycle. Get off the motorcycle. Get off the motorcycle. State police. Now, that was a little scary because it wasn't obviously a cop. It was yeah. just a guy with a gun. He did yeah. then say he was with the police. Uh, what happened? Well, uh, in this case, uh, he, uh, Tony Graber didn't get arrested until he posted that video on YouTube. Uh, and once he posted it on YouTube, the state police, they raided uh, his home. They came into his home in the, in the, uh, early in the morning, uh, you know, guns drawn, th uh, you know, confiscated a bunch of computer equipment, held him and his parents at gunpoint. Uh, arrested him. He spent several nights in jail, uh, and he had felony charges hanging over his head for several months uh, until the case finally got to court. Uh, and then a state judge in Maryland actually threw out the charges in a, a, a really strongly worded opinion. Yeah, here's, here's what he said. Those of us who are public officials and are entrusted with the power of the state should not expect our actions to be shielded from public observation said qui custodiat, I'm not going to try to do the Latin, but it's, he ended with saying, who watches the watchman, which is something Plato asked, and it's a good question, because these guys have big powers. I'm stunned that they can just do this, and they went in this guy's home, nothing happened to them? Well, that's, I mean, that's really the double standard here, right? The prosecutor who charged him, the cops who raided him and arrested him, they were all wrong about the law and did real harm to him, and none of them are going to suffer any consequences at all. And I think that's really where the double standard is here. Now, one good thing about the new technology is it's never been easier to keep an eye on the cops. Yeah. I mean, my, my cell phone has a camera here, and... Well, my, mine does too, and uh, I'll, I'll just show you how easy this is. And I, I really think this technology is uh, uh, incredibly powerful uh, as well as easy. Let's just get this rolling here. So 
right now, uh, I'm recording this, so I'm recording us, us chatting right now. And uh, as I'm recording my conversation with you, this is actually uh, live streaming up to a website called Kik, Q -I -K com. And not only is it streaming on that website, it's also being archived on Kik's servers. So, uh, John, if, if you were offended by my recording this conversation and your security detail were to rough me up... And we confiscate the phone. And you, and you throw the phone against the wall or stomp on it and break it, this video is now stored off-site and it's safe and it can't be tampered with. Now, this is a, an extraordinary uh, piece of technology. I mean, this is a... This, I, I don't... I don't think it's an overstatement to say it. I mean, this is revolutionary in terms of holding government officials accountable, not just police officers, but, I mean, we saw this in Iran when the, revolu the Iranian revolution a couple summers ago. We saw these videos coming out of the government cracking down on these protesters, and these videos were, were getting sent up to satellites and beamed all over the world before the government could do anything about it. Um, there's a, you know, George Orwell has a famous saying, is, uh, he says, if you want to envision the future of, uh, of humanity, imagine a boot stepping on a human face forever, right? A very sort of pessimistic view of government. Yes. But, you know, I think it, he's probably still right, uh, but now there's probably someone who's going to be around with a cell phone camera to take a video and post it on YouTube. And really, I mean, transparency is, I think, half the battle. This little thing is a weapon against tyranny. It is. It absolutely is. And I think we're, we should, I mean, not only should we sort of celebrate that, that technology, that we have this huge weapon against tyranny in our pockets, but I, I, we need to make sure that the laws protect the way we use it and that, uh, ensure that we can continue to use it that way. But Jim Pascoe of the Fraternal Order of Police says we have to put some faith and trust in our authority figures. And it has a chilling effect, camera, on officers who are now afraid to act for fear of retribution by video. I mean, I think if you're a police officer and you're carrying a gun and a badge, you're holding yourself up to sort of a higher level of accountability. Uh, and if you're doing your job right, uh, you shouldn't have anything to fear from every citizens having video. It, should, it will probably help you more than it will hurt you. And here's one example that happened just right outside the studio. A policeman charged a bicyclist with attempted assault. He claimed that the bicyclist just rode into him on purpose. But then this video turned up. <laughs> Clearly not on purpose. What happened there? Uh, I mean, in this case, uh, the police officer lost his job. I think that's probably a good thing. Me too. Uh, one last case. In Washington, D.C., a police officer got angry when he drove past a snowball fight and his car was hit with snowballs. He denied that he ever drew his gun. The department backed him until this video appeared. What happened then? Well, I mean, this case really illustrates how powerful these citizen shot videos are. In this case, uh, the, the D.C. Police Department continued to say that there was no gun drawn well after this video was on YouTube and had, had spread all over Twitter. But this video clearly shows he did have his gun drawn, and the officer ended up getting, I think he got a 10 or 20 day suspension. Uh, but, you know, this, again, this is why this technology is so powerful. Until now, until everybody had these cameras in their pockets, uh, the police narrative was the official narrative. We That's had the only the narrative we had. And now and we, can, we, can, we can challenge that narrative. I assume usually they tell the truth, but it's good that we have cameras. Thank you, Radley Balco.